Right, okay, everyone. Obviously, uh, not a great night last night. A pretty deflating one. I think deflating is the word that I would use to describe the entire evening. Uh, and my mood is well deflated. I'm not particularly angry. Uh, I'm not even upset. I'm not on the verge of tears. I'm certainly not happy or content with losing yet another game at home in the Champions League. I just felt it was a really, really deflating night, kind of all the way from start to finish, to be honest. Even the disco lights were crap. So yes, as always in these day after videos, I'm going to try and keep things as balanced as possible. Uh, still, you know, still reeling from last night in terms of the, the disappointment and, and how kind of poor the evening was. But as always, going to try and put it in some context as to where Celtic are at at the moment, where we can get to and why all hope isn't lost because there has been a fair bit of overreaction to the game last night. I mean, I've had people calling Kyogo crap, uh, which I think we all know isn't the case. He's just going through a wee tough period at the moment. I get why people are, are frustrated with last night and, you know, why basically everyone's come under a bit of scrutiny. It's just because it, it hurts. It's pretty disheartening to see Celtic continually lose these matches. I think that's now seven home games in a row in the Champions League that we've lost every single one of them. So I totally get that it's frustrating, but I think it's important that we we separate this kind of long, dire record uh, and the current team who are only responsible for, for a small part of it. So if we start on the game itself, I didn't feel we started the game well at all. And um, Well, we did actually. We started the, the first minute well. We had that chance for Maida, which is just behind them. It's a difficult opportunity. And I felt like the stadium was really rocking at that stage. And then for some reason after that, we just kind of let them into the game. We let them control probably the next 20 minutes of the match. And I just felt as if the crowd was really quiet at that stage. And it kind of set the tone for the night. Having said that, then about the 20 minute mark, we grow into the game. The crowd got up. And I think Leipzig were a bit rattled for five or ten minutes. You had the, the left back putting the ball out straight out for a corner. You had the right back miscontrolling the ball. You know, good players who for a small period seemed a little bit rattled. And in that five minute period, we created a number of good chances. We had the O'Reilly shot off the post, the rebound coming to Greg Taylor, who should probably do better, hits the bar. We had uh, Haksabanovic's shot at the near post that the keeper saves, not really a chance. And the big one for me was the Kyogo one, Haksabanovic, who was really good last night, I think, curls the ball in. And Kyogo should just do a lot better. He has to make the keeper make a save at the very least. That all came in a small period. And we could well have been ahead at half time. Having said that, though, at half time, and any of my pals who I was at the game with or are people who are in group chats with me, we'll know that I was feeling pretty down about our chances at halftime. It's really strange because we had probably been slightly the better team in that first half, certainly in terms of opportunities, but it just had a feeling of inevitability. I don't know if anyone else felt that. Just going into the second half, that I just knew how it would pan out, and it panned out in the exact way that I predicted. As the game got went on, we got a little bit leggy, well, a big bit leggy, and Leipzig just grew into the game. They looked more dangerous and more dangerous as time went on. They eventually get their goal, which was coming at that stage. And then the the kind of frustrating bit for me is they get the second one. It just feels like we never we never lose games 1-0 at home in Europe. It's almost as if we just lose that first goal and then a few minutes later, you know, the second one is coming. It happened uh, against Real Madrid. It happened against Bayer Leverkusen in the Europa League last year. It just feels as if the minute that first goal goes in, the whole stadium is just so used to this now that the atmosphere drops and the players almost kind of, I'm not going to say they chuck it, but they almost realise at that stage we're not getting back in. We're certainly not going to win this game. And, you know, if it had kept at 1-0, maybe the last few minutes we could really have piled the pressure on and maybe got a draw out of the game. But the minute it goes 2-0, it's just like... It's just over and half the stadium walks out. So I found that frustrating. Um, I found the, the fact that we didn't force their keeper into basically a save all night, really. We had the Haksabanovic one and 
I think there was a shot as well in the second half that was kind of straight down at him. Um, and it was his first European start of his career. And I just felt stuff like that um, frustrated me last night. This is what the group F table looks like at this stage. And as you can see, it doesn't make particularly pretty reading for us. We are out of qualification for the last 16 of the competition. I know we're only five points behind Leipzig, but just the way it all works out with Leipzig and Shakhtar still to face each other and our head-to-head -head now uh, not going to be better than Leipzig's anyway. Uh, we are out of the Champions League this season. In terms of a third-place finish, uh, yeah, it's extremely unlikely to do that. We'll need to beat Shakhtar in a fortnight and then avoid defeat to Madrid on uh, match day six and hope that Leipzig go to Poland and beat Shakhtar. That Shakhtar game right now doesn't seem particularly appealing. Uh, I actually think it's still a massive game for Celtic. I think it's a massive game for, for a number of reasons. In terms of this year's competition, as I say, it's, it's going to be difficult for us to, to, to make the Europa League and, and finish third in our group, but we have to beat Shakhtar to even give ourselves an opportunity. And if we do beat Shakhtar, you know, we're only a point behind going into match day six. And I think it just gives everyone a, a glimmer of hope going into the Bernabeu. And I think we really need that. I mean, the, the thought of not beating Shakhtar and going into match day six, you know, completely out of everything is a, is a pretty dire one to be honest, but maybe that's what's going to happen. And I think also just for this team as well, I think we need to take something out of this group stage campaign. You know, I was looking at it earlier and after we are finished uh, in the Bernabeu, I think it's 1st or 2nd of November, there's a fair chance that we don't play another European match until mid-September next year. And that could be back in the Champions League group stage if we win the league. Now, that is a long period of time. That is like nine and a half, ten months, I think, without any European football. And I think it's really important that we do our learning at this level. So we really need to use these last two matches as a real opportunity to gain some experience at this level. Um, and I think getting that first win together against Shakhtar in front of a full Celtic Park would be pretty big for the team going forward. As, as I say, I think it's a big game may not feel like it at the moment. Certainly not as big a game as it could have been had we won last night. But I still think that's a really important game for for the team and, and for the fan base as well. We just really need to end this run uh, of, of losing matches at home. We need to get that first victory in, I think it's nine years against Shakhtar. And then obviously that, that takes us on to match day six and you never know. So we'll obviously cover that game uh, the nearer we get to it. After the match last night, uh, I was in the mix zone, a lot happening there, various broadcasts, and it's basically just a big assembly of different broadcasters with different rights from different nations. Uh, Ange was cutting about there, Marco Rosa was cutting about there, several Leipzig players, not as many Celtic players. I think when your team loses, you're less likely to see um, players coming out, they don't really fancy facing the media too much. We did get to speak to Greg Taylor after the game. Um, this is what he had to say. I mean, I get nice. I think we know the same pattern here, don't we? Yeah, no chances. Chances. Um, Not really. Got a lot to say, to be fair. The ball came at you pretty quickly from, uh, I think Matt said the shots came off the post, came at you pretty quickly. And it was just all you could do to get it back to target. Yeah, probably could maybe catch it a wee bit cleaner, but it hits the bar and then it doesn't fall for us. But yeah, that's what this level is. Um, a wee bit deflated, to be fair. In yeah, that spell in the game, it was looking good. Yeah, I think it looked good. And again, periods right throughout the game, like maybe they started a wee bit stronger, finished a wee bit stronger, but certainly that middle chunk, I think we were uh, right in that game, which is um, the second part. Does it feel like we're far away, Greg, at this level? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say so, but. It's certainly like in performances it doesn't feel that way but certainly in results it does um, at the moment uh, just the elite level we need to be I've said it before that's that ruthless word that's at both ends and we're not quite there just yet Are you sick and tired of people saying yeah you played well take credit from them? No because it's, it's we, we have played well within yeah. the game you know what I mean like I think everyone in the stadium can see that that there's a, it's a team playing our football we're not deviating away from that at all but we're just, um, and every boy out there, the players, subject come on, gave their absolute all for this club. That's 
one thing I want to definitely say is you see the work that the forward boys are putting in, the defence, the whole whole group as a team is we're desperate for success. We wanted to show that we belong on this level. We really, really do. We want to, the fans they come with us it's home and away. We we want to give them a night that they go home thinking that was a strike. Celtic team with a strong performance, but we're just not just not there yet. So clearly very gutted last night, Greg Taylor. Seemed kinda of lost for words at at stages, but I guess that's um I guess that's how we all feel. It's it's just it's just pretty galling. I mean the comment he, he made in response to my question that he doesn't feel we're far away in terms of performances but the results do make him feel pretty far away from, from making progress. So that kind of sums up how I feel. Um, well done to Greg Taylor for, for coming out last night. We also spoke to Cameron Carter-Vickers. I think we'll let you hear that on tomorrow's video. Just space it out a little bit. Um, and you also spoke to the media after the game last night. He reckons that we're not too far away from making progress at this level. He said it's about holding our nerve and not falling into the trap of thinking it's not working. I believe it is not far away from working. I think the worst thing you can do is now shy away from doing what we are doing because we haven't had success immediately at this level. My sort of theory on this stuff is that you have to keep persevering and heading down this road. If we were getting outplayed and not creating chances, we would need a different mindset. But I think we are very close to becoming a really good team at this level. Our progress can't be fast-tracked just because I want it to happen. We still have to take the steps and the players have got to go through the experiences. That's kind of the only option we, we have. You know, everyone has the supporters, players, manager. We're, we're obviously not going to sack Ange. We're not going to rip this up and start again. There'd be no reason to do that at all, obviously. We just need to try and use this this season as an opportunity to build for next season. I think there are, there are still reasons to be hopeful. I mean, we haven't we haven't been totally outplayed in any of these four matches. Sure, Real Madrid won 3 0 late on. We were outclassed in that in the closing stages, but we went toe to toe with them for the majority of that game. The the game in um, in Warsaw against Shakhtar, we were the better team. Leipzig, probably the two games, especially the one in Germany, they were the better team. But you know, we had moments in those games. We created really good opportunities in those games. So I think we need to hold on to that and just really take what we can out of these last two games. And as I say, there's a, there's a fair chance that these are our last two European games for the best part of a year. And at that stage, it's all going to just turn to domestic stuff. And it's going to probably feel like a little bit of a come down going to all the domestic stuff for the best part of a year. But we can only get back to the Champions League by winning the Premiership. And that's the important thing. You know, we're talking about winning the Premiership this year, winning a, a decent position right now. Two points clear at the top. If we can win the league, we will be back in the Champions League group stage. And maybe it's just finding experience at this level and going through these difficult moments and learning from it that makes us a better team. I think we probably need to sign some better players in some positions if we really want to succeed at this level as well. I think composure was a major issue, especially last night. The difference between what we did in the final third and what they did in the final third was, was pretty stark, I would suggest. But again, you're never really going to be able to sign some of the players that they've got because they pay big money for them and they improve them and they're worth even more money right now. Um, so it's it's just it's just so challenging for a club like Celtic, but I think we can do so much better. And Ange clearly feels we can do so much better and Greg Taylor feels we can do so much better. So that's what we just have to hold on to. Um, I guess we're going to have plenty of time to discuss this Celtic in Europe stuff. It's going to take time. For, for Celtic to hopefully reach that point in Europe. But I still think we can make strides. Um, I still think we make strides over the next couple of games. You know, as I say, Shakhtar, Real Madrid, there's still a third of this campaign for us to try and get something out of it. Even if we finish fourth, try and get that first win under our belt against Shakhtar in match day five. Um, I'll leave it there for now. As I say, it's been a bit all over the place. These videos always are. Uh, let us know, I'm sure you will, what you thought of the game last night, what you think of Celtic's position at the moment, what we need to do, and how you're feeling about the whole thing. I guess there'll be a, a kind of wide range of feelings at the moment. Yeah, we'll leave it for now. We're back tomorrow.